What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 25 of Park to Prem here with Taolor Town. It is very early in the morning as I record this so my voice is feeling raspy. I'm still waking up and while I'm hoping our team is going to be awake today because it's a huge FA Cup game. Uh, if we just look at it we are going to be taking on Chippenham Town today in the fourth qualifying round. Yes, just one round away from an elusive first round appearance and our opposition today playing the Vanarama South and uh, as you can see, they're currently 21st, predicted to finish rock bottom, currently eluding that, albeit by goal difference. And this feels like quite a winnable game, if I'm honest. This feels like the kind of game that we should be winning. And, uh, well, the recent form is in our favour. Odds, narrowly in our favour as well. So, I'm putting pressure on us. We need to be winning this game today. Anyway, since you were last here, you'll notice it is mid-October, so we're very much in the thick of it still when it comes to fixture congestion. But in the seven games since last episode, which of course was the double match, double header, um, we've bounced back pretty well. Defensively, we've looked absolutely superb in this run. Five clean sheets in all competitions. It started off with a 2-2 draw against Hyde, Leighton Stewart getting a goal in, perhaps a slightly unusual goal scorer, David Connolly in the 77th minute ensuring that we got a share of the spoils, and he's re-emerged as a top quality right back for us. He didn't start the season at right back because of McLaughlin, but the only reason he didn't start ahead of McLaughlin was because I wasn't quite as convinced by his attacking prowess. You know, that flair's not great off the ball, dribbling, crossing. It's all just a little bit average, but he's got outstanding physicals. His mentals on the whole are quite good, and his defensive technicals are very good. And he's kind of just cemented himself now with a spot in the first team at right back. His average ratings, the former Stoke youngster, have been excellent. And uh, yeah, that was a huge performance by him. We then went into another game against Farsley. A 3-0 win here, very convincing. Charlie Wellens getting us off to a flyer. Stuart and Harrison with goals in this one too. And off the back of that, we took on Morpeth. Now, Morpeth at this point, when we were playing them, were second in the league. They, of course, poached Skerritt away from us. So I was expecting a hard-fought battle. It certainly was that. Leighton Stewart got our noses ahead uh, in the 13th minute. And then it took until the 91st minute to make sure the game was dead and buried. Um, but nevertheless, a huge win. A great clean sheet at home. And we followed that up with another clean sheet at home in the FA Cup third qualifying round. We were drawn against Marine. Um, they are a team who have struggled down at the bottom of our division. And we dispatched of them quite convincingly. Akeem Rose, uh, Aran Sabia with a goal as well. An unusual goal scorer, Aran Sabia. When he came in, I had such high, high hopes for him. It would be fair to say that he's not really matched my expectations of him. He's been pretty darn average, unfortunately. But in this game, he came good for us. And, uh, well, in the next game, what a game this was. Blythe Spartans. I've not shown any highlights of 3-2s or 3-3s. Three I'm going to show you the highlights of this game. It was an absolute roller coaster. And, well, we had the worst possible start against one of our promotion rivals, Blythe, sp scoring after four minutes and not long after, in the 41st minute, they went 2-0 up at half-time. And at that point, you know, taking on one of our big promotional rivals aside, it felt like it was going to be another one of these games where we get defeated by one of the teams around us. But in the second half, we galvanised, we fought back well, Josh Harrison with a back post header, then Charlie Wellens with a header as well. A little unusual for our midfielders in the wide areas to be the men getting on the end of crosses, but they were in this game. And at 2-2 going into the 90th minute, you kind of think, well, that's that. Luke Wally then scores for them, an incredible effort, it's got to be said, and my heart sank. You know, four minutes of added time. We're going into the 95th minute. We have a corner. Come if the man, come if Rodri. What an effort by the centre-back. Probably going to be a goal of the season. The the spectacle of it, the, the situation it occurred in just added to the drama. And yeah, on his left peg, just smashed it into the top corner. Apparently, he has three long shots. I don't believe it, anyone. I do not believe it. What a goal that was by him. And from there, we've gone on to get two more wins. We beat Witten Albion 4-0. First minute goal set us on our way. And then a variety of goal scorers, as you can see. And then in the Alan Turvey Cup, first round, we took on Berry Town, And Leighton Stewart got the solitary goal in at the 54th minute to get us the win there. Anyway, since you were last here... We've actually dropped into the transfer market, folks. Yes, we have. We found Rodri a new playmate because I love Rodri, but Parks wasn't quite doing it for me. Yeah, I mean, if we just look at him, where are you, Glenn Parks? Six point seven four rating in his last five games. Seven point oh four rating isn't terrible. But then you look at Pretty, who's on a seven point one three with better recent form, and also Alex Evans, who's been in very good form recently. 
it was difficult to justify continuing to play him. But we got offered an opportunity to sign a fantastic youngster, Ollie Younger. Um, yeah, look at this guy. Wow, what a centre-back this guy is. Right-footed, perfect partner to have alongside Rodri. And, uh, well, you can see here, looking at it, last year was actually playing for Tranmere in League One. Made 16 appearances. I'm not going to claim he made a splash for them, but the fact we've managed to pick up a player who played regularly at, at League One level last year... Makes me feel pretty good about ourselves. Continuing to show good progress. He's joined us on £250 a week. Uh, he was one of the players on our 2022 shortlist of all the players you know who we knew were going to be expiring. Um, still looking at a few other players such as uh, Annesley here who... I don't know if we need another centre-back, but he is a very good centre-back who's currently on trial with us. There's a few of us here who I've been looking at. Matty Downing feels like the pick of the bunch. He would be a huge coup if we could get him a left-back. When I've... Looked to sign him before, though. He's been asking for over a thousand pounds, and I don't have over a thousand pounds. I'm hoping that no one's going to find him, and then we can pick him up. He 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 would be the player right now who I would love to get. You might remember a few episodes ago at the start of the year, I mentioned the FC United and Manchester midfielder Anderson. Never mentioned him since he went to, he went to Northampton in in League Two. If you were if you were wondering where that dream went, but he's he's my new kind of idea would be downing because I like Midgley but left back of our back four positions is probably the weakest in terms of performances although you can see in the last four games this centre-back setup has done really good things for the team around them David Connolly's come in he started to perform well it means unfortunately Andy Jackson is demoted to the bench but I'm not gonna worry about that too much um, but on the whole, yeah, we've we found our feet you know it's amazing how just changing the defence with a few personnel bringing in a few players makes a world of difference and it really has uh, Jermaine Anderson is currently unhappy about lack of first team football I want to give him more chances and to be fair when we've played him he's played very well maybe I should give him the game today I could bring him in for Warrington who's one booking off a suspension and then play Boxall a deep line playmaker that makes the most sense to me you'll notice also Sonny Best in the team for today's game I'm going to give him a run out in the FA Cup so far this year three appearances that average rating is not good, is it? But in the FA Cup and in general cup games, a 7.7 .7 rating. So we'll hope for more of that from him today. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I would want to do here with this team. Is there anything else more to do? I'm not sure there is. I'm not sure there is. I mean, we could bring in Wellens, I guess. He probably should be playing. He could come on for Aaron Sabir and then we could bring in Wellens there. Do I want to play Sunny Best or do I want to play Wellens? Let's do a quick comparison this is, this is how far that we've come, I guess. This is a good barometer of, I have to, I have to play Wellens, don't I? I'm sorry, Sonny, but <laughs> it's not. It's a no contest. It's a, um, yeah, right, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I feel bad. He's on the bench. If we need an impact player, maybe he can come on and make a splash. So this is the team we're going to go with. Harker in goal, Midgley at left back, the Irishman Connolly at right back. Rodri and Younger, hopefully that's the centre-back partnership that we need. Anderson comes in thanks to his good form and we see Boxall move to deep line playmaker. This guy has been very, very good for us so far. Six assists in 13 from centre mid is a really good contribution. Harrison and Wellens on the wings. Harrison, since his sending off last time, has started a redemption arc. Five goals, four assists so far this season in 16 games is good. And his recent performances have been very good. So I'm giving him a, I'm giving him a second chance here, everyone. He let me down immensely against Gateshead. Knowing my luck, he will now get sent off against Chippenham Town. And can Wenda back from injury, great to see. Not 100% fit, but we're going to chance him alongside Leighton Stewart. Anyway, let's get into this. This is, this is the big game for us. If we can win this first round of the FA Cup, we will well, possibly get a football league side to take on. Um, that would be, I'm trying to think who, well, it could be anyone in League 2 or League 1. Of course, there is still the chance that we get drawn against non-league opposition and it's all a little bit underwhelming. Equally, if we could somehow make it to the third round, which might be getting a little ahead of ourselves. In fact, it definitely is getting ahead of ourselves. But if we could get there, that would be a huge payday for us. But anyway, we're taking on a team in a higher division. Yes, we are the favourites of this game, probably because our squad quality is a little bit better. We still need to be at our absolute very best for this game. And I'm I'm nervous for it. I, I will level with you. I am feeling on edge. And Well, after 35 minutes without a highlight, it makes me more on edge as we are, well, put in a position to maybe try and win the ball up high up the pitch. Harrison denies nicely. Plays it forward to Stuart. Could be offside. I'm not going to get carried away. 
it was an offside, it would have counted. Stuart has skied what would have been a fantastic opportunity for a goal. And, I mean, look at the stats. We've had 59% of the ball, 13 shots, 5 on target. They've done absolutely nothing. And yet we can't quite score. Charlie Wellens, by the way, he still hates my guts. Every time I do a team talk, everyone reacts well except him. He's just a bit of a moody boy. You can see why Manchester United released him. Anyway, Connolly whipping it in. Can we find our man, Anderson, at the edge of the box? He's become a bit of a long shot specialist, Anderson. I almost expect him to bang one in from range as he and Boxall have their own little private game in the middle of the pitch. Boxall finds Midgley on the overlap. Options queuing up in the middle. Back post. Wellens is there. I mean, if only I'd given him a happier team talk, maybe he heads that in. But yes, 55 minutes gone. We are dominant, but that makes me nervous. That makes me feel like this game could turn in an instant. And, it, well, they've got the ball. They're pumping it into our box. Smith is there, and he scores completely against the run of play. Um, that's unfortunate, isn't it? Wellens has not played well, and he's not got good body language. You know what? Sonny Best, get on the pitch. Can wender has been slow in this game. I'm going to bring in uh, Akeem Rose as well for him. Um, just because Akeem Rose has been in some really good goal-scoring form for us this year. And I feel like the Jamaican international might be what we need. He's going to get a good chemistry link with Jermaine Anderson in the, the midfield. How will we respond, though? Double change has been made and immediately into another highlight. Am I about to have made some inspired changes? We'll find out. Younger lumps the ball long. Chase it, Sonny. Sonny Best wins it. Of course he does. Square it, Sonny. Where are you going, Sonny? Where are you going? He hits it straight at the keeper. I mean, it would have been a fairy tale start. Unfortunately, he's not good enough to do that. At least at this level right here and now. Maybe he can prove me wrong. We need to defend this here. Harker. Oh my god, that is not a pass you want to see your team making across the centre of the box. The keeper passing it to the left back who's sat more narrowly than him. Harrison marauding down the left. Can he get the ball in? He can't. It falls to Anderson who hits it off the woodwork. Stuart rebound. Stuart rebound. You were offside. He was offside. Oh, I got very excited then. I thought Jermaine Anderson had scored an absolute banger. I'm going to go very attacking here. I feel like we have to. Thing is, I don't want to overcommit men forward because we're just. I feel like a goal's coming, you know? Maybe I'm completely wrong to feel like that, but I just feel like. Oh, I need to go more attacking now, don't I? I don't, I don't want to go more attacking because I feel like they could just hit us on the break again and we're doing well doing what we're doing right now. But equally, there, there comes a point where you have to get the ball forward more. I'm also going to tell the players to shoot on sight. I mean, time's just tri trickling away. We need a goal here to take it to a replay. Boxall whipped in. Rose is there. Hits it on the volley. He's offside. He's offside. Oh, it just it has that air that it's just going to be one of those games for us where you just can't quite get over the line. He is offside. I can't even complain. Four minutes of added time. We need a miracle. The miracle, it ain't coming, folks. The FA Cup dream dies here again. We are cursed in this competition. At this point, I am convinced. It's another 1-0 for the live com. We've had far too many of these 1-0s. That is... Oh, that's just heartbreaking. We dominated that game from start to finish. I have one chance and they take it. Oh, that that's really unfortunate, isn't it? I mean, I'm disappointed. The board are disappointed. At least they understand why we were knocked out. Matlock, I guess, are still in the competition. So our game against them has been rescheduled. That does mean that we get a week's rest. And to be honest, we really, really need that week's rest. So we will make the most of it. Um, yeah, that is... Good news, I guess. Just looking at cup competitions, by the way. We're still in the Alan Turvey Cup. We're in the second round where we're taking on Horsham. We took on Horsham YMCA in the FA Cup. We're getting drawn against all the Horshams. I don't know if there's any more Horsham teams. If there are, well, we, we might be taking them, them on later because that's what's been happening so far. Unfortunately, we've still got the... Well, fortunately, we have still got the FA Trophy to look for. That FA Cup result is bitterly disappointing. Just a quick update on the league. Obviously, our recent form has been... Two draws, three wins since the Gateshead results. Uh, Gateshead have really struggled since that game. They, they have lost a lot of matches. And Gainsborough Trinity have quickly emerged as one of the top teams. They've only lost one match all season. Although they have drawn eight. They've got a game in hand. Although they've played three more matches than us. We are in a situation where if we can win our games in hand, we're in a really good spot. But that's still kind of a big if. The, the gauntlet is very much laid ahead for us. 
You can see Morpa from Blythe, who we beat and drew against recently, both ahead of us, but within touching distance. Radcliffe maintaining their unbeaten run. And behind us, you've got Matlock, who aren't too far away. Cliff Rowe have played a lot more games than us and are close. But we're in this weird spot now where we're sick, but with the games that we have in hand, there is a good chance that we can go and challenge Gainsborough towards the top of the table. And I would almost be disappointed if we didn't, because you actually look at who we've played. We've played Gateshead, we've played Blythe, we've played Morpeth, we've played Radcliffe. Um, have we played Gainsborough yet? I feel like we have. Yeah, we played them at the start of the year and lost 2-1. So we've played all the teams ahead of us in the league in the first half of the season. Although I'm now saying all this and realising it's a 42-game season and we've, we've played 15 games. We're not actually that far away from the halfway point. Either way, it's getting a bit tasty in the league. If we can start to grind out more results, I'll be happy. But, yeah, it's just not good enough, folks, is the bottom line. We have the best goal difference in the league, but we keep slipping up. Like this game against Chippenham. Games that we should absolutely be winning, and we just don't find the breakthrough, unfortunately. And that really hurts. That really gets me down, and I know it shouldn't. Uh, by the way, you can see Gateshead's form. They've lost their last four matches. Who have they played in there? They've played Matlock, Radcliffe. I mean, they've played a lot away from home, to be fair. But even so, they're slipping up. Gainsborough, they they look like the team to beat. They've got Zach Dronfield. He apparently is their best player. 20 years old. He looks very, very happy. Um, they've still got Mark Kelly, our former man, playing for them. Although, his average ratings aren't particularly inspiring. Maybe we'll get reunited with him before too long um, when we play them next. Anyway, in terms of next episode, we have got that Gainsborough game on the horizon. That feels like a big one to me, so I think we'll come back for that, possibly to it up with the game against Horsham or the game against Altrincham, who were predicted to do very good things. We'll, we'll see what's happening. Maybe I've made a load of transfers by next time, and we need to cover them all. I'm not entirely sure, but well, you'll, you'll know for sure next time, won't you? And so, so will I. So yes, I've rambled on for long enough today. I am absolutely heartbroken to losing the FA Cup like that. It's another year where this cursed competition continues to curse us. And I feel just disappointed and sad. I'm not going to lie to you. Right, I'm done. I've rambled. I've cried. I've weeped. I'm going to go and sleep. <laughs> it's me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.